on family, welcome back to Twin Rivers Outdoors. Today, we're gonna go out, fish a new body of water. Uh, this is my first time going there. We're gonna give you guys five of the simplest and most easy tips to make your 2023 crappie fishing season the best crappie season you've had ever. So go ahead, stick around. Um, we're gonna list the tips from five to one, worst to best, um, all great tips though. So stick around to the end, you're gonna like this one. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We just crossed 150 subscribers, so thank you guys for all the support. We're gonna get right into it. Thank you guys for joining Twin Rivers Outdoors. My name's Austin. All right, everybody. Today, I'm gonna give you guys five tips to be more successful and catch more crappie in 2023. And there are all kinds of fish all over this. But the first tip, tip number five, is do a little homework on the water you're gonna fish. Know what kind of species of fish are in there. And once you once you know what kind of species of fish you're working with, you can kind of figure out what's eating what, what the forage is, what the food source is. And once you figure that out, you can generally figure out what a good bait or presentation style of bait is gonna be. So like me, this is the first time I've ever fished this place. I was talking to the owner a little bit and uh, I know there's crappie, I know there's bluegill, big bluegill, and there's big bass. Um, they want me to get some crappie out of here, so I'm assuming that this place has got a lot of crappie in it. They're probably trying to get the bass population up. So, I can just assume that there's too many crappie. Alright. Did a little switching up here. I went to a 30 second bounce jig head. Slow it down a little bit. This is a good one, whatever it is. Big bluegill. Big bluegill. Look at that fat daddy. My lord. Wow. Now that, that is a fat boy there. My goodness. Still not what we're after, but nice, nice, healthy bluegill in here. Yeah, there's a crappie. Yeah, there's a crappie. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad at all. There's our first crappie of the day. Nice black, pretty, pretty dark black. Let me help you, buddy. There we go. Got him right in the top of the dome. Awesome. Okay. So we're supposed to keep these guys, so I'm going to put him in the bucket. All right, guys, we're back. We got that, that first crappie in the bucket. And with that, we're going to get to tip number four. Tip number four is use the weather to your advantage. Now what I mean by that is, like today, we've got nice overcast days. So normally, when it's overcast like this, 
you can generally make the assumption that another good bluegill. But generally, oh, came off. But generally, you can make the assumption that these crappie are going to be roaming around looking for forage that way. Um, and the reason they do that on overcast days, there's one there, another crappie. Yeah. The reason they do that on overcast days is because they feel a little bit more safe. They don't feel like uh, they're as visible. Ooh, he's messed up. It's a messed up crappie. You got a messed up lip. But the crappie feel more safe when it's a little overcast out running around. Now, if you've got like sunny bluebird skies, sun's hitting the water a little better, you could generally make the assumption that those fish are going to be a little bit closer to structure. So what I'm doing here is, oh, there's one, another good crappie. Yeah, found a pile of them right out here running around. See what I, all I did here, and I'll show you guys. So all I did here is I saw that this, there's a, I don't know if you can see that well or not, but there is a nice wall going down in the water right here. There's another one right over here. So what I did is I just started casting oh, out in the direction of that log that's down over that way. Nice fish. I just started casting in the direction of that log, assuming that there would be crappie either around that area roaming around or attached to it because even on the overcast days some fish are still going to stay pretty close to the structure and others are going to be out you know off of it a little ways we all go over gear real quick that i'm using so my jig here i've got one 30 second ounce jig head from brush pile in their green color and i've got a two and a half inch dancer in disco gold throwing my acc crappie stick here i've got the eight footer with the super grips fantastic i love the super grips um, and i've got a lose wally marshall speed shooter reel spooled up with some bass pro shops high vis crappie mono it is six pound test i just recently switched to this i was using uh, berkeley fluorocarbon and i gotta say i'm still getting used to this mono but mono it's a it's a little different it floats floats a little bit more than fluoro which i knew that going in but kind of affects the way your your jig falls so you gotta kind of take that into account You can see bites even when you don't feel them, which I really, really like. Another crappie over there. That's a good one. That's a dang good one. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, buddy, look at that beast. Look at that pretty, pretty black crappie. Smacking them brush pile jigs. I'm gonna I'm gonna bump this one just because I'm curious. Stop. Dude, come on. That guy's about 11 and a half inch fish. 11 and a half inch fish. Not a bad drop at all. We will take that. Okay. Let's see if we can find one more before I give you tip number three. Make sure you guys are sticking around to the end of the video to see the best tip that I can give you. Also, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel here, 
go ahead hit that subscribe button drop a like on the video let me know if you like these tips and tricks videos if you guys do i'll start doing more of them so that's a little dink crappie but that's what he wants out of here There you are. That boy was probably spawned yesterday. Yeah, he just hatched. He just hatched. That's okay, though. And with that, we're going to get in to tip number three. And that is use temperature trends to your advantage also be mindful of the temperature trends so recently here we've had pretty warm days you know it's been gradually warming up it's may here so it's about that time you know i can all i can make the assumption based off these temperature trends that crappie are probably going to be shallow you're probably going to find the occasional deep one, but they're probably going to be shallow. And off that, that'll also help you narrow down your target areas to go find more crappie. So we're doing research before we come fish. We are using the weather and we're using temperature trends all to our advantage. All right, so I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth on tip number three, which I've already given that to you guys, and that is be mindful of temperature trends. So what I mean when I say that, is kind of like I said before. So, you know, you, you just gotta keep in mind, like, okay, so like here, here in my central Illinois, it's been predominantly you know pretty pretty chilly i wouldn't i mean chilly i guess you know it's been about 60 with lows in the 40s at night till this last i don't know last few days it started to warm up quite a bit the last few days so what i did there's one so all i did is i just took that into account and i can assume there's another crappie. I can assume that, okay, it was pretty chilly and now it's warming up pretty quick. So that's probably done a number on these water temps. And crappie, when that water hits, I don't know, 60, 62, they're going to move up. Now, if it was the middle of summer and it's been 90 degrees for a month, you could make the assumption that those crappie are probably pretty daggone deep. They're going to go out real deep, you know, and get away from it all. There's one. Swimming off with her. Ran into these dinky ones. That's okay though. That's what we're uh, that's what we're trying to get rid of. I made a color swap. Still using these uh, brush pile jigs dancer style i just switched it up to a monkey milk color moving down the way a little bit just seeing what we got going on oh dang he hit that like a ton of bricks another crop yep all right Nice little crappie. I'm going to go put him in the bucket. There's crappie. 
Good crop. Watched him eat it. Yep, okay. So that, that tells you something also. So we were right with our uh, temperature trend and structure deal where they were going to be. Look how dark that boy is. Can you see that tuxedo? That is how you know it is spawn time. So we know where they're at. We know exactly where they're at. And with that, we will get into step or tip number two. That is switch your styles, presentations, baits, depth, speeds. Keep switching it up until you find the bite. I was lucky enough today not have to do too much experimenting. But I have made a couple different changes. At first, as you guys saw, I was using that 16th ounce jig head. And I figured out that this wasn't incredibly deep where in the parts that I'm, I'm able to access from the bank. I figured out that, okay, that 16th ounce that's falling a little bit too quick. Ooh. That 16th ounce was falling a little bit too fast, making everything a little skittish of it. So I, I figured that out, made the quick switch to one 32nd ounce jig, and we've been knocking them dead ever since. That was pretty, pretty crappie. Yep. We found some spawners. I've made a couple color change. Well, yeah, a couple color changes. That's a good fish there. Look how dark he is. Look how dark he is. What a beast. Okay. And I'm noticing that we are catching a little bit higher quality of fish on this monkey milk and that could just be the locations I'm fishing or it could be the big boys prefer this you could take that however you want but that's the kind of stuff you got to pay attention to all right family we are back I made a change still throwing these brush pile jigs dancer style I've got an orange and chartreuse now there's one i still don't think that was one on bed yeah, came up from the depths and got it no nah, he wasn't i could still see that one he's another good fish though fish. But anyway, with that, we'll give you the next tip and the best tip, the best for last. So tip number one. Tip number one. This is the secret sauce. It is cover water. Move, move, move. Find something. Move, move, move. That's the secret. Keep it going. And this is also a two-part tip, so there's two things that go into this. For crappie fishing in general, you got to move, you got to find them. And once you find them, fish that spot until it dies, burn it out. It's just what you got to do because where, where you find one crappie, there's a bunch more, especially when they're spawning like this. But the second part of this tip is find the structure. If you move and you find the structure, whatever that structure may be, that structure could be rock, that structure could be wood, that could be grass, anything. It could be anything you could th possibly think of. It could be, you know, one rock in, in a grass bed or something. Find that structure and you find the fish. Fish love, like inconsistencies and stuff and they tend to they tend to sit on that stuff 
like right there I saw a little opening in the grass targeted it and bang we catch a pretty dang good crappie pretty dang good one if I might say that's a nice fish right there absolutely that's a unit got a little bonus tip for you guys to let me prove how he, how awesome this bonus tip is look at that fish that's a good good fish probably 10 11 inch crappie good fish if you can see what's in his dome piece there that's brush pile jigs so do yourselves a favor go out and get you some brush pile jigs that is the bonus tip of the day brush pile jigs go get them Look at that pig. Whew. Now, if you guys were not a believer before, you should be now. Pig. Look at that. Pig. Right at the top of the dome, right where you want it. Falls right out. Look at that guy. Big spawning male. Look at those colors, man. That is a pretty, pretty fish. Goodness. That's a toad, man. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for today's episode on Twin Rivers Outdoors. Hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. Um, hopefully, you can put these tips to good use. So we'll go over those again. So, you know, number five, do some homework on the water. Figure out what you got in the water. Maybe what's eating what or anything like that structures things like that learn everything you can about the body of water next use that weather to your advantage today we were pretty fortunate to have that overcast sky you know not necessarily bluebird a little sun peeking through here and there but we knew where we were going to find them around that structure or just off of it next be mindful of the temperature trend which kind of falls into this other tip four using the weather to your advantage but i like to go with the temperature just because it'll tell you a lot about the fish behavior before you even get there second tip number two switch your style and your colors of bait so different you know body shapes maybe smaller bait larger bait anything you can do to switch your weights like I did you know go from 16th to a 32nd or vice versa anything like that just keep it moving and figure it out once you get a bite you've got it figured out and of course that last tip the best one cover that water Find the structure, find the fish. That's my motto, I go by that. You know, almost always, if you find the structure, you're gonna find the fish. That bonus tip also, use those brush pile jigs, they'll save your life. Thank you guys for joining Twin Rivers Outdoors and we'll catch you on the next one. My name's Austin, thank you for joining.